So your your regular services that were being uh, I, 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 well were being addressed with a fee would now expand to voice over internet protocol and, and to broadband. What it would also do too is it would limit the dollars that would go to those folks that are providing that cell phone coverage or broadband coverage in those areas. It would limit it to just two entities being able to get the funds and it would be done now competitively. So that, those are some of the proposals in the voucher Terry bill uh, that are going forward. Uh, we see that as being, you know, a, a pretty interesting debate. Those dollars are targeted again towards areas that don't have a service. It was always targeted originally for towards wired services and then trying to take wired services dollars and say, well, now we can use some of those fees to expand broadband to attract people uh, providing cell phone coverage into those areas and then upgrading that cell phone coverage uh, to 3G so that you could have uh, wireless high speed for a computer. So that is work, but the technology is expanding so quickly uh, the technology has gotten a little bit ahead of where this bill was originally intended to be. So it'll be an interesting debate about where, do the, where does the fee structure go and where do we go as far as where those dollars go. And, and I think that's going to be extraordinarily important in, in the future. Uh, the bill is backed by the major telecoms, Verizon, AT&T. Uh, the National uh, Cable and Telecommunications Association, though, as you can imagine, is not quite as excited about it because it doesn't... Uh, lift up their technology like it does the other wireless technology. So they're not opposing it, but they're sitting back right now kind of watching how things develop. So we will see uh, what what happens in, in, uh, in that situation. Now, obviously, they're competing against the wireless providers in these service areas. So they are, I think, uh, making sure that it's not going to create a competitive disadvantage for them. wanted to talk a little bit, too, about our uh, new Media Caucus. We have put together a New Media Caucus. There are several other members and myself that have looked at how are we going to make sure we're keeping up with the technology. You know, technology is changing so quickly, I don't think there's any way you can get in front of it, but we want to figure out, well, at least where is it going? So four of us have created a, 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 a New Media Caucus. It's Congressman Bob Latta from Ohio, Congressman John Culberson from Texas, and Congressman Buck McKeon from California. And what we're trying to do is to make sure that we are keeping up with the technology as it progresses and, and looking at how do we use it. How do we use it to communicate with constituents, but how do we also use it on the campaign side? And as you know, those two tracks obviously have different needs, and we also have to, under law, keep them separate. So we want to look at how do we, how do we make all that work, and how do we make sure that we are doing the things that we need to do to properly use, use that technology. And these are... Uh, three other members, uh, they're, we're all, if they're all part of the Republican conference, uh, but what we're doing is trying to, uh, to get this information back to other members. As you can imagine, there are different levels of tech savvy amongst members there, uh, some that still use the legal pad and the pencil, uh, others that uh, you know, are constantly on their two or three Blackberries each day in their iPhone, uh, putting information out there. I've never seen somebody as, as plugged in as the folks in our me new media caucus uh, John Culberson, I said, you know, he ought to have implants into his brain that go directly to his iPhone because he would be, he would, he would be, be amazing. But we're looking at all those different things. We had the opportunity to travel out to Silicon Valley. We specifically focused on going to visit with the companies out there to figure out where are things going. So we went and met with Apple Computer to say, listen, where do you see technology going? Obviously, with their iPhone and the apps that they develop for the iPhone, they're going in a particular direction. We also visited the folks at Google. As you know, Google is going in a, sp in a specific direction with Android and the development of apps there uh, for, uh, for Blackberries and others. And as you know, um, Apple is not supporting Android, so they don't want those apps being used on their iPhone. So it's, a, it's, it's, it's an interesting dynamic there. And we look at other, other technologies out there. You look at Facebook, Twitter, the other what I call immediate sources of communication and then you look at Google now with Google Wave to where you can bring lots of people together in those subgroups to be able to communicate. You know, Google Wave I think has got a lot of applications in the future. We met with folks at Google about what they're doing with Wave, what they're doing to refine Google Wave as a communications uh, uh, platform. Uh, we also talked with them about uh, Google Latitude. Uh, you know, we talk about uh, being able to keep up with folks. Well. I'm a subscriber to Google Latitude, and as you know, Google Latitude allows folks to keep up with where you are. Your cell phone continually puts out a ping as long as your cell phone's on. 
Google Latitude allows you to seek that ping and put on a map wherever you are. So my staff now can tell wherever I am, anywhere in the world. So as long as, as, long as I'm within cell phone range, they can pull it up. Of course, I have to give it permission to do that. So it can't do that by itself, but I give it permission to do that, and my staff can figure out exactly where I am anywhere in the world. My wife loves it. <laughs> but it just goes to show that, that, that new technology out there. Also, Google Voice, a new technology that, that I'm using that allows you to put together a single telephone number and you manage all of your different phones through a single telephone number. So you can have people call that number and that number can then direct a call to one cell phone or to another cell phone or to your home line and you can determine who gets directed where. Uh, you can determine if somebody that calls gets a voice message or gets sent to a voicemail box or a particular message. So it allows you to manage all of your communications. Like me, I carry multiple cell phones and have multiple numbers. It allows you now to manage all of your communications through a single telephone number. And it's easy because it's something that I remember pretty quickly. I like to fish, so, so my, my management number is 982 Tuna. So, so it's, e it's, it's easy for me to remember. And folks call that number, and then I'm able to direct communications in the most applicable way. And it's, and it's helpful because if you're carrying multiple cell phones, you have a cell phone that's ringing all the time, especially if we're running around Congress, you want to make sure that people are able to communicate with you in the most efficient way. And those people that need to get in touch with you immediately have the ability to do that. And you can then prioritize phone calls and ones that are coming in. So we had a great time there at Google. Uh, Google is an amazing place. It's a college campus for, all, for, for the most part. Uh, we went there, and you know, their rule in the building is you're never more than 150, 150 feet away from food and drink, so there are food stations all over the place. Uh, there are people out there in the hallway playing chess. They're out playing beach volleyball. And I looked there and said, well, how do you tell when anybody's working? <laughs> but they are, you know, they're very aggressive. They provide communications and free communications and free transportation for all their workers. So uh, they are they're very plugged in have a very highly motivated workforce there. We had great conversations with the folks. They see a lot of things coming up. They see applications for Blackberries and cell phones being sort of the next wave of communication. So that's, that, that I think is where they see uh, the most possibility with their Android and then obviously with uh, Apple iPhone apps. Now those are going to be in competition, so it'll be interesting to see who wins out. Google has been uh, been pretty adamant that they're that they're in the forefront of that, and they want Apple to be following them. Apple has a little bit different idea, but we also met with the folks at Facebook to look at how Facebook works, and also how do you use Facebook to communicate with people, not just through your friends list, but through advertisements. And it's amazing how you can focus on the key aspects of what people have on their Facebook page and being able to target them. You can say, hey, listen, anybody that has uh, Ronald Reagan on their Facebook pages and, and, uh, and lives in these zip codes, that's who I want to communicate with. So you can actually put uh, an online ad through Facebook to target those folks. So it was great to learn how they are using that technology to communicate with folks. We also have been doing a lot of work with Google Ads about how you can focus on folks that click on certain things in the, on, on their Google screen and how you can make sure that if folks are clicking, looking for certain things, that your ad pops up in the right-hand column. So, and it's amazing the amount of ap applicability you have there. And the nice thing about that is, is you only pay when somebody clicks. So you're paying for an active uh, participation by somebody. It's not like you're paying for what in a lot of instances is a passive uh, uh, communication process. This is an active communication process. So I think that holds lots of promise for us in the future.